Hello everyone, it's GigaBeef here and today we're going to be doing a Tarkov weapons tier list for patch 12.12. Now I've not done any tier lists up until this point and some people were asking me whether I would do a weapons tier list. Now that we're you know a decent portion of the way through patch 12.12, who knows whether there's a wipe coming soon or whatever, I thought it might be nice to do this now while everything's a little bit crazy in game. So getting started, the way that I've done this going from left to right, broadly speaking, is the order that it shows on the Tarkov wiki for ballistics. So we we'll start with 12 gauge shotguns moving into 9mm of various kinds and then through into more of the assault rifle type calibers and then off into the, the higher calibers at the end. So let's jump right into it and start with the double barreled shotgun. So the double barreled shotgun, honestly, I think a lot of people thought it was going to be really bad, but I genuinely think that this gun is pretty good and for the price. So the way I'm going to list these is it's going to be in terms of the whole weapon. So would I actually buy this weapon? So it's based on value, it's based on the ammo, it's based on the availability and all of that kind of stuff. So the double barrel, 8,000 rubles. This thing is extremely cheap. Normally I'm not a huge shotgun fan, but they, you know, they, can, they have their place and they are nice to use sometimes. And usually it's because they're so budget. Now the double barrel that comes with its downsides, you only get two shots. So can be a bit of a pain sometimes, but you can load it in with Magnum Buckshot and shoot people's legs. You can take people out in two hits, no problem. You can use AP-20 slugs. If you're using the, the double mode where it shoots both at the same time, the double action, you do have an accuracy problem, so it's a bit tricky, but you can quite easily go bang, bang and single tap and kill people like that. And even really, really geared people. So I'm probably going to put this, hmm, I'm probably going to put this in about let's, I'm going to put it in D. I was going to put it in C, but I think I'm probably putting it in, in D just because of its usability like if you miss with both of those shots it really is quite hard to come back from that and so just because of that i'm putting it here i think it's very borderline between c or d because there are better shotguns in my opinion onto the revolver now the revolver shotgun is actually pretty decent because it doesn't ever jam it takes five shells but the reloading is a little bit of a problem and because of that i think i'm probably going to put that one in c here it's definitely usable and you can kill people with it but i think i'd rather have some of the other semis and it's not that cheap either. Like some of the other semis are really cheap, like the 153. Whereas this is not that cheap, but it does, you know, it's, it's a fun thing to use and it can be quite good. Onto the Mossberg. This is one of the pump actions. This is actually pretty decent relatively. It's not, it's not too bad, but it's got some of the best kind of handling and feeling stats when you're firing the weapon. So I think I'm probably going to end up putting this in D just because it's not, it's not super cheap, but it's not semi either. And so it is going in here for me. M870, I'm actually going to pop this up to C, even though it is a pump as well, but it has a 10 round mag in it, which is quite unusual for kind of the, the non sigers of this world. So that's actually pretty decent. I've been using this a little bit. It's actually very, very fast to level your mastery with these shotguns, simply because you hit so many times if you're using something like Flechette or Express Buck or Magnum Buck or whichever, usually Flechette, because it's very, very easy to kill people wearing really anything, two to three shots to the thorax, and normally they'll die. Next one, the MP133. I think this is going to have to firmly go into, hmm, probably in E actually. This is not as nice as the Mossberg, but it's, the stats are okay. It's kind of close between these, but I'm, I'm going to stick this here. MP153. Now, this is one of the proper proper semis, and I'm going to put this up here in B. B or is it going to be? I'm going to put I'm going to put it in B, and I think it's in B tier just because they are situational still. They're not the most ultimate killing machine of all time so i think it would do a disservice to put it into either a or into s and very similar to the 155 as well these two guns are actually very similar i think the 153 probably ekes it out just a little bit you can build the 155 with a little thermal scope and stuff so you can have like a really high ergo build with a thermal which is kind of cool if you're going through bushes and things i like these guys either with ap20 slugs or with flechette depending on the range flechette really falls off so ap20 is much better for those kind of longer range maps so 155 with ap20 slugs the problem then you've got is the accuracy and this is the thing there's there's downsides along with the upsides what you really want is the thermal optic and you want the 153's accuracy and you want to be using ap20s that makes it very very versatile but you can't really have all of those things all at once saga 12 i'm also going to put into this category it is more moddable and you can get the drums with it but again it's in this sort of similar semi-auto category you can use all the same ammo so i'm going to put it there the toz <laughs> the toz i'm actually just going to end up putting down here um actually i'll put it in e i'll put it in e because it is usable it is actually usable and it's it's cheap so that's why it's going into e it's going into e because it's cheap as opposed to because it's like any any good in particular the ks23 honestly i still think the ks23 is s tier but 
It's probably A now because it's not as available, just because it's not as available as it used to be. It used to be S because you could get it all the time, whereas now it's a bit harder to run. You have to have high level traders and you have to be doing the barter for it. So it's not as good as it used to be. So that, I'm going to drop it down just one little category from where I, I think I would have put it previously, because when it was all over the place, people were just dying left, right and center with Shrap 10 and every single person seemed to have one, whereas now they don't. So it's going in A. Now, moving on to the pistols. I'm not a big pistols guy, and so these are going to be quite harsh. This is the 9x18 pistols. I'm going to put the Makarov straight in here. It's at that point where you realize that you've made a, a typo within the weapon, which is quite entertaining. So we're, gonna, we're just going to change that now. I, I don't think the Makarov is actually that good a weapon. It's got a very, very small magazine. The ammo for it is really not very good. And for that reason, I'm going to put it down here. Maybe use it right at the start, but it really doesn't pack much of a punch, and it kind of sucks. And the PB, again, I just really don't like these 9x18 weapons. They just they just don't hit hard enough. 9x18 really sucks. You don't get the variety of ammo that you do with 9x19. It's okay for some leg meta, but in semi-auto, I just don't really like it. And the APS is at least fun because it goes full auto, but the full auto is kind of uncontrollable. So we're going to tick it up one tier up into E. And the same with the APB, which is basically the silenced version. And then we're into the SMGs for, for 9x18. So the, the Kedda and the Kedda B. I actually think the, the Kedda is is okay. It's, it's not too bad. I, I'm going to put that in D. You can do leg meta with it. You can get 30 round mags and you can fire some decent flesh damage. Not as good as some others, but you know it's, it's in the decent range so you can kill people in something like six shots, seven shots, something like that. Kedda B is actually not bad because of the suppressedness of it. It's actually, it's actually decent and uh, it's slightly lower recoil and I think it's a, a solid C here. It's just because of the ammo that these are getting hit. And same thing with the Clint. I'm going to put the Clint up here because it can fire slightly different ammo. It's not suppressed, but it's slightly better than the, the Kedda because you can you can fire one of the different ammos that doesn't fit into these two guys. The TT, unfortunately, is going to go down into F. These are the two Tokarev versions. So it's the PPSH and the TT that take Tokarev. That's going to go down here. And the PPSH, now this weapon, this weapon is quite good. This weapon is actually quite good. You can put a drum in this and you can actually do real leg meta with this guy. And again, because of the mechanism of the PPSH or just the way it's implemented in game, you can't actually jam this guy either. Now, you're a bit limited because again of the ammo when you're dealing with people with armor. And so for that reason, I think it's got to go in as a C, but it's definitely usable. It's a usable gun. It's got an extremely high rate of fire. It's just the ammo that lets it down a bit, which is a shame. Now, moving on to 9x19, the Rhino 9. This is very, very small. I'm going to put it down here. It's a revolver. It doesn't have enough shots. 9x19 isn't that good. So it's just, it's going to have to go down into F. I'm sorry. <laughs> now, on to the others. So the Grouch, the M9, the Glock 17, the PL15, and the P226R, they're all kind of similar. It really just comes down to personal preference as to which ones you like and the iron sights and which ones you're used to. I don't really use these very much, the Glock and the M9. I think that's just because I don't use pistols all that much. And I've used the M9 a little bit more than all of the others, and I actually had a good time with it. But I just don't feel that at this point, they're really that good. Like right at the beginning of the wipe, they're kind of okay. But now they just, 9mm doesn't feel great anyway. And that's even if you're firing it in full auto. So I can't with good conscience put these any higher than E tier. I do think they're better than these just because they have bigger magazines. But otherwise, it just, it just doesn't really work. The Glock 18C is slightly different because it's full auto. This thing can absolutely tear through people. I'm going to put this in um, up at C as well because it has a drum mag or you can get a drum mag for it of 50. And if you put something like rip rounds in it, it'll destroy people. The same thing with AP, but you can't really get AP anymore. So that prevents it from going further up in the list, actually. I mean, the, the availability of AP rounds for this actually probably puts it into D. I'm actually going to downgrade this into D just because the availability of the rounds. This used to be really, really fun to run around with AP 6.3, but it's so hard to get now. You really just have to use leg meta with it. And it's probably better in that capacity, but that lack of flexibility, I'm just going to downgrade it a little bit for that. Right, on to the next set of weapons. This is 9x19, but this is the submachine guns for it. So the MP5. I'm going to put the MP5 in at a solid C. It's decent. It's good early game. It's okay later on, but it's not nothing amazing. It's just a solid performer and it's fairly cheap. MP5K, I'm going to have to put this down into D tier. This is sort of similar territory to the Glock. It's kind of a meme because it doesn't have a stock, so it has really high recoil. So that's just where it's going to go. It's kind of hard to mod the MP5, so that's probably why it can't get really higher than a C in my opinion. It might even be a little bit lower, but I'm, I'm going to leave it there for the time being. The MP9, 
I'm actually going to put this. Hmm, I'm actually going to put this up in B because I think this isn't this isn't too bad. The MP9 and the MP9N. These have got insane fire rates. They are they do have a lot of recoil, so it means that you do have to use them with leg meta only. But they have really really high fire rate, and, and it means that they can actually work really quite well. Sort of similar to PPSH. Yeah, I, maybe maybe I even move these around, you know, because it's I feel it's slightly unfair having the MP9 up here and having the PPSH down there because for, for budget, PPSH is really good. So I'm actually going to stick these in here and I'm going to put the MP5 down there just because it doesn't do anything special and it's kind of hard to mod and you sort of want to mod it. Whereas the fire rate on these means that you can do funny leg things. Whereas you can't really with the MP5, it doesn't, doesn't really function that well. PP19, I'm also going to put it down with the MP5. These weapons function fairly similarly, except the PP19 has better recoil control simply because it fires on a lower RPM. But a lower RPM with 9mm, I've always been slightly skeptical of. Even when 9mm was working quite well, I never really liked the PP19. I always preferred the MP5. And now with, as I said, the ammo availability, it just is really tricky. The MPX feels terrible, this wipe. And again, that's going to go down into D just because it feels so bad. It's something to do with the camera recoil and the way that the recoil functions on this weapon. It almost feels unusable. It's really horrible. So I, I very rarely see people using them. Saying that, I did kill someone literally yesterday with what, who had one. But otherwise, I, I don't really see people running them. Tiger 9, maybe this is going to upset some people. This is going down into F tier and the same with the STM. Semi-auto 9mm just does not compete at all. This is really, really terrible. And I, I honestly would prefer a pistol. I'd prefer the, the speediness and the maneuverability of one, one of these pistols than I would use an actual rifle type weapon like this for it. Vector 9mm, this is going to go up in... I'm just going to put it in the same C here as well. I mean, it's... Mm, that, maybe that does seem a bit, a little bit unfair. I'm going to put it in B. I'm going to put it in B just because it is very stable. It has very low recoil, so it can be okay. But the ammo, again, is, is not very good. So that's the reason why it can't go higher than that. Right, the Rhino, the new Rhino using the new ammo, the 357. I think this one probably has to go... It's probably another E just because the ammo is okay. But being a revolver, it's, it's difficult because you have to... The reloading and you don't have that many shots and, and that kind of thing. I actually don't think these pistols are too bad. They're actually okay because they run 45 and 45 is such a good round. I don't think they're too, too terrible, if I'm honest. The M1911, mm, that just doesn't have enough bullets in it. So that's probably the same down here for the same reason that these guys just end up getting stuck in this category. With the Rhino though, it's kind of unfair. Maybe, maybe I even move the Rhino down into here. Just I just don't think I'd use this weapon. It's very hard to kill people with it. Whereas these, I, I probably, personally, I'd put them on par. The ammo is much, much better than, than for 9 mil. But the functionality is very similar. You're still going for headshots. I'm not really sure if I care about the 70 damage if I'm using a pistol because I just use something full auto if I did. So you're really going for headshots. I don't really care whether I'm using 9mm or 45 for this. And that's just that's just the way it is. It's just the way it is for me. Speaking about a weapon that does benefit very strongly from the damage is the UMP. The UMP is quite clearly S tier for the value that it gives. This was very bad last wipe because the lower recoil was not a benefit for it. it lots of guns had really good recoil now they've added the recoil across the board the ump with its low rate of fire has disproportionately benefited from this recoil change and the round performs really really well the ump outperforms a lot of assault rifles in the game at the moment even at close range and the lower rpm is now a benefit for it rather than a disadvantage whereas something like the m4 the rpm is now a disadvantage and same with the hk which we'll move on to a bit later so ump is up here and partly because you can get it with the knife barter it's just insane value. It's such good value. The ammo is super cheap. Match FMJ is fine. The AP ammo for it is fairly available once you get the trader levels and it's also good. So it's really, really decent. It's, it's basically every person's sidearm slash default gun these days. It's just you pair it with a sniper rifle, run it on its own. It's, it's very decent. And there's so many of them. You can't take the pistol grip off either. And when you take the mag out, it's still too slot. So you don't have the, any of the insurance shenanigans. It's kind of ha slightly harder for people to take. You can fold the stock, but it's slightly harder for people to take than something like an MP7 or an MP5 or, or whatever. So it's sort of the perfect gun. The only problem with it, I would say, is that the suppressor is very, very expensive, but you don't really need it if you're running it on the side. And if you're going budget, then you probably don't really care. Now, ACP Vector. I'm probably going to put this here. And this is kind of strange because you'd think that maybe the ACP Vector should go higher than the UMP. But this is just based on value. The ACP Vector is more expensive than the UMP. It runs out of rounds very, very quickly. It almost has a double the fire rate as the UMP. And I actually think that's maybe a disadvantage because it's only 30 round magazines. So you run out of bullets incredibly quickly. If you can get them on target, it's fine. But this thing, this thing vibrates when you fire it because it's so, so fast. And it wiggles from side to side horizontally like an absolute beast. And it's 
kind of hard to make it work. Like horizontal, there's not much you can do about it. Vertical, you can always pull down, you can adjust for it, you can work out how the pattern works and get used to it. Horizontal, it's just going to spray everywhere. And so anything outside of a fairly short distance, a lot of the rounds just go off target. And so I don't think the fire rate actually helps here. So it's going to go in A tier just because you can get such DPS out of this weapon. It's one of the highest DPS SMGs. But for the reasons that I've discussed, I don't think it's necessarily as flexible or as cheap as the UMP. I'd probably rather have a UMP most of the time, if I'm honest. Next onto the Shrimp, which is one of the underrated pistols in the game. I'm still going to put it in this category just because, again, it's a pistol, so we're looking for headshots and that kind of thing. The ammo for this is really good. The top tier ammo is sort of hard to get a little bit, but it's sort of in a similar camp to AP for 45. So I'm going to put it in this same category because, again, I'm not going to be trying to leg meta people with it. Maybe you're going to go through the thorax in two or three shots, but that's just, I don't know. I don't tend to use them like this. If I'm using them like that, then I'm going to be using a different gun. Same thing for the 5.7. I've enjoyed the 5.7 quite a bit, but I think I'm just going to stick it in here. To be honest, maybe I move up all of these uh, these kind of high damage pistols up into the next tier. It's because I think E does seem a little bit unfair. If we move all of these guys up one, because you can get two shots on Thorax. Like it's not actually impossible to do that. And it is usable that way. I just don't really do it very much. And so my sort of anti or lack of pistol bias, you can see coming through here. But I think to be fair, I think it probably does kind of, they do, they do go into that category for the price that they are. I, I think that's, I think that's about right. Next onto the P90. Now, I really like the P90. I genuinely think this is really good. It's a very expensive weapon. I'm actually going to put it in S tier. I actually think it's amazing, this wipe. I don't know about you guys, but if you're using SS190, you can buy a lot of that. You, SS190, which is the supersonic round, or SS, or sorry, SB193, which is the subsonic round. You can still buy quite a lot of it, even though it was restricted. It comes with a 50 round mag by default, and it has really good stats just by default. I don't think this is too bad at all. Your ergonomics is still really good with the 50 because it was made for the gun. So I'm going to put that up here and it bursts through most people with 37. It's one of the classic 37 pen weapons and it really handily deals with class four and even some of the lower class fives simply because of its fire rate with 900. It's really good. It's kind of a, a nice all rounder of SMGs. You get a bit of everything and I think it's really, really decent. The MP7, I also think is top tier. I think this is super, super good. A bit more close range. You can't laser people down at medium distance like you can with the P90, but it's it packs an incredible punch. The rounds, like the FMJ rounds, are really, really good. And the same thing with the MP7A2. It's a bit more expensive, but a bit more moddable. It doesn't really matter which one you buy, but the MP7A2 does perform a little bit better at range. But I think these, I think both of these guns are amazing just because of the ammo that comes with them. The recoil can be a little bit tricky to tame, but it's it shreds people. If you use it for the right purpose, it's absolutely insane. Right, the next one, the VSS and the AS Val. These are very similar just because they fire the same ammo and the AS Val really, for all intents and purposes in Tarkov, is just a slightly more moddable version of the VSS. They both feel very similar. These have been nerfed into the ground. I'm going to put them in C just because the ammo is still so good. You can use them on semi and you can blow through people's armor because even the SP5 round, which is the basic round, is still really decent, has super high damage and is great. So if you can use it on semi, it's fine, but it's not B, A or S tier anymore, just simply because they basically took the ability to full auto at any reasonable distance away. And that was why they were very, very good. And so I think it goes into sort of a situational camp with a few of these other guns that are decent in their own right, but they're sort of in their own special situation to actually make them work properly. So I'm going to stick them in here. I think that's probably about fair. Right, the next one is the VPO 209 and the VPO 215, which is the 366 TKM guns. I'm actually going to start with the VPO 215 because I'm going to put this in A. I actually think this is a really, really good weapon for a Bolty. It's very, very cheap. It fires the APM ammo for 366, which I think is underrated by a lot of the community. People think that, yes, it has good damage and it has really good pen. It's kind of like a, an M80 that's actually even better, but it only comes out of these two weapons. And the ammo is amazing, but the guns are not that great but you can complete a lot of the bolty tasks with it. And the accuracy isn't that bad. The accuracy penalty that you get from APM ammo is only 33%. And as it's a percentage of a number that's already relatively small, you tend not to have any problems until after 200 meters, something like that, even with APM, which honestly, I think it's fine. There's tons of clips of people going through the road camps and, and killing with that. It's honestly really quite good. It's all right. The VPO 209 does use the same ammo, which makes it okay but the problem with this is it starts with such high recoil compared to the 7.62 version and so for that reason I'm going to put this one in C. I still think it's okay you can still blast straight through people if they're wearing class 3 and it's going to two tap a lot of people with class 4 but the really high recoil does make it a little bit of a problem sometimes. So the next one we're on to the AK-74M and series. I've kind of bundled all these together the M, the N, the S, 
I put all those in one just because I don't think it makes enough of a difference. I'm going to put them in B because I think they're good. They're easily to mod, mod on a budget. You can use BT rounds in them, which is fine, or BS if you want to crack high tier armor. Don't really recommend Egolnik these days just because of the low damage. But honestly, these weapons are fine. I think they're kind of underrated. They're, they're just all over Tarkov and, and people are a bit bored of them, I suppose. The 74U, you can't mod it quite as well. I'm going to put this in C. Just for that reason, I think I just don't think it's quite as good as, as these ones. You can get these really quite low, honestly, and they're and they're good. With the low fire rate, they've become a lot better in 1212 than they were. I feel like 556 and 545 have sort of rebalanced quite a lot in general. The RPK, I'm also going to put this in the same category. Again, it's good for budget builds. It can be used fairly effectively, and it comes pretty decent to start with. So I think it's a good I think it's a good gun. I think it's a solid B-tier gun. Next one, on to the ADAR. Now I'm not a massive fan of semi-auto 5.56. I like having the ability to go full auto, and I think you can get that fairly cheaply for, from some other guns. And so I'm actually going to end up putting the ADAR into D here. I think it's a bit expensive for what it is. You can get the lower from Mechanic, and you can replace them fairly easily if you find a scav gun. But even still, I'm going to put the ADAR, and the same thing with the TX, because they're basically the same weapon. The TX is just a fancier version, really. You get a few extra bits, but it's nothing amazing. I like to have full auto if I'm going 5.56. Despite the nerfs, I like to have that ability. AK-101, I think this is actually a really good gun. I'm going to put this in A, because despite it being 5.56, it, because of the lower RPM, it actually has decent recoil, and you can mod it cheaply like you can with an AK. So I think this gun is actually pretty decent. The M4, I've used it a decent amount. I'm going to stick it in B. As I said, I think that these kind of weapons have all sort of come much closer. It's very expensive to mod well, which is one of the reasons that goes against having it in a higher tier. So I'm, I'm not sure about this guy anymore. HK416, again, is going to be similar in the B tier with the M4. It's nothing special. It's another assault rifle, but these two are more expensive. So if you want something that fires a little bit faster, has higher or a better time to kill i should say these have higher time to kill and these have lower time to kill but these are more expensive and these are a bit cheaper i think that sort of balances it out in in the b tier then the mdr i'm gonna again put that up into a again with the lower fire rate and using 556 i actually think it's decent it's on par with the ak 101 in a lot of ways to me and also the scar l is going to go up here as well because this has the the best controllability out of all of them as we've seen from the many tests that people have done over 1212 i'm not actually a huge fan of scar because you have to make that trade off with ergonomics and so i normally prefer the the mdr and you can mod the ak 101 a lot more than either of these two guns so i actually prefer the 101 and the 556 MDR to the scar, but that's that's just me. It's personal preference. Next up's the MCX. I did a video about this recently, and so I've been using it quite a bit. I'm going to put this in B as well, and that might be slightly too low, but I think it's a bit situational. I think it's better than the M4 and the HK on time to kill. The ammo is very limited, which is kind of the problem with this gun. So I'm going to put it in here. I think it's fair in B. It's really good CQB, actually. I think it's, it's superior to the M4 in CQB because the rounds are a little bit better and it kills people that little bit much quicker. And the suppressors for it are decent value if you do the barter from Skier. So I think I think it's good. Right, on to 762. So the VPO 136. I'm going to start to run out of space in my D tier. I think it's in solid D tier. It, this is fine early wipe, but later on with the semi-auto, I just don't think it's really that good. So we're going to put it in here. I usually like having automatic to run with the AKM. You can get those onto decent recoil and they're actually quite good in this in this wipe. But I'm going to put this in, in here. We might have to make more space in our D at some point. The regular SKS. Hmm, where to put that? That's slightly, slightly tricky because this is a very, very cheap gun and can be pretty decent. But again, you can't really mod it. And so it's, it's a thing you use early game and then not really so much after that. So I think this probably goes... Probably goes into, uh, I really want, I want to put it in E, but just because you can't really use it after the early game, because you can't mod this one at all. The OPSKS is a little bit better, and I think it's sort of situational, I think that goes up here, because you can put a scope on it. So I do think this is probably, this is probably about right. These are sort of guns that you'd only use at the beginning when you have to, anytime you can get something better, or an OP version that you can actually put a scope on, I think you do, and so it's going to go down into E for me. AKMSN, this is the one without the good stock on it, and that is going to be another D tier gun for me start stacking these these d tier guns up there and the ak-103 is probably going to go into b i would say it's kind of on par with these other weapons it can't get to insane levels of recoil for meta but it's a solid contender akmn is going to go into a tier because you can now get the muzzle adapter the 308 muzzle which means you can attach the really good suppressors to it and you can get this guy if you do the regular akm you can get it for the two shonkered barter which means it's it's very very good the Mutant, on the other hand, goes into S tier. This was good last wipe and now is even better. This has all of the hallmarks of being a great gun this wipe. Despite being a great gun last wipe, it's got low-ish RPM. It also has really damaging bullets 
and it's really highly moddable. It also has amazing stats behind the scenes. And so for that reason, the Mutant got super, super pushed up. It's a really, really good gun. It is quite restrictive, but even the restrictiveness of the weapon these days, I think it still sits in S tier just because of how good it is. Now, the Hunter. The Hunter used to be the darling of 7.62 NATO, but I'm going to put it down in E because ever since durability was introduced, it has tiny magazines, you can't fire at long range, and so it's just nowhere near as flexible as it used to be because it was beaten out by the RFB. If you want to buy a new one that has 100 durability, the RFB is only about 7,000 more expensive, comes with 20 round mags, it has lower recoil, it has easier modability, it's just better overall. And the, the RFB I actually think is really good. The RFB actually I'm going to put into A. It's not top top tier, but for the value, it's really decent. Skier 2, you can get it really early and you can fight M80 out of it. This thing was absolutely killing people. This is absolutely killing people. In fact, you know, I might even put it in S just because of value. Just because of value. It's really good. It's such a good, good gun, this wipe. SA58. Now this, is, this guy is a bit of a problem. I, I almost feel like I want to put him into E. The problem here is that you really can't mod it at all. The other 7.62 NATO guns, relatively speaking, are just way better. And you have to sacrifice either recoil, ergonomics, something on this weapon to actually use it in any capacity. If you want a big drum mag, then you can't really lift it up anymore. It's just, it's a real problem. The SA-58 is in a bad spot. They buffed it a little bit, this wipe, but it's still, it's still nowhere near where it needs to be. MDR 7.62, this thing is super restricted, but it's going to go in S tier. This is arguably one of the best guns in the entire game, in my opinion. Really high ergo, comes with 7.62 NATO, you can suppress it, it's really, really decent. You know, the big brother of the MDR 5.56, and it's got amazing stats. Um, it doesn't necessarily get to the technical top levels of recoil, but I still think it's very, very, very good for these reasons. All right, Scar Rage. Because of the ergo trade-off, I'm just going to stick this down into A. I don't think it's necessarily quite as good as the MDR, um, the 762 version, just because of that, but it's still very, very decent. And the G28, I kind of have a problem with. I just don't really know where to put it, to be honest, because it's just way too expensive for what it gives you. You can get the same performance out of the SR25 that we're going to talk about and the M1A much, much cheaper than this guy. It's just way too much for what it should be. So I think I'm probably just going to slap it in C because it's a good gun, I'm just going to stick it over there. <laughs> Maybe I'll bring it right to the front. Should we bring it right to the front? Put it over the top of the uh, S, the uh, OPSKS. Let's put it there. It's just too much. Like it's a good weapon, but it's too much money, and that's the issue with it. Same thing with the RSAS. We might need to bring the RSAS in as well. I thought the, the D category was going to be a problem, but it's in fact the, the C category that is is now an issue. We'll make a separate C category down here, and let's just make a little uh, make another C box and just paste it over here. These are the overflow from C, and maybe we'll have the overflow from D2. Let's just put that in there as well. <laughs> Fine, we'll put the 136 in here. So these are the extras. Now, SR25, I'm going to put this in A. This thing is moddable. It's cheap-ish. It's cheap enough, so it's it's sort of in the middle tier. It's not ridiculous, but you can make really good weapons for it, really good builds for it fairly cost-effectively. And the same thing with the M1A. I personally prefer the SR. The M1A gets slightly better recoil reduction, but the SR typically gets better ergonomics and weighs less. Um, but the M1A has got a really good barter for the SAS version. So I think they're sort of on par. It sort of just depends on your preference, really. Now, onto the Balties. I'm not a massive Balti fan, so I'm going to put these relatively just res with respect to each other rather than necessarily within their individual classes. On that basis, I think the DVL goes into A, to be honest with you. It's very quiet. It's very accurate. It's really, really cool to use. The suppressed version is obviously really, really neat. E5000 probably also goes into A tier because it has a a much better reloading animation than some of the others. You keep your sight on target a lot more. M700, I don't know. I, it's it's fine, but I've never been a mega, mega fan of this guy. I'm just going to stick it in here. You have to mod it quite a lot to make it look cool and all that stuff, but, you know, it, it just it is what it is. Mosin Inf, I'm going to put that down into D. Actually, I'll put it down there into D tier. Good rounds, difficult to use. Iron sights on this thing. You can mod it with some weird stuff, but basically you need to be able to hit your shots. If you can hit your shots already, you'll do good with a lot of these other weapons. Then it means you'll also do well with the Mosin Infantry. Mosin Sniper is a little bit better. Um, I'm going to put that into C tier as well, just because a lot of these, it, it's sort of not as good as the other guns, but it comes with the better ammo. So it's actually okay. SV-98, I'm going to put it into A tier. It's really accurate actually. And I think this is really, really nice. I, I Probably my favorite Balti. I don't really use them that often, but using the 7.62.54 R round means it absolutely cracks people, which is insane. And it's it's much more available than something like M61. Yeah, you can use M62, but if you're using BT for this, it's really, really decent. SVDS. Now, where do, we, where do we go with this? I think that this is a situational weapon that 
kind of gets outclassed by the other 762 guns. So I'm going to put this in B, actually. I'm going to put the SVD into B. I think it's very, very good, but the recoil is a little bit too high and you can get the same kind of performance out of different guns with the two shot thorax and the really high damage. You can't really one shot people outside of super close up and with PS rounds with the SVDS. So it doesn't have any extra advantages over other weapons that are slightly higher than it, like um, the Scar H, in my opinion. Next one, we're going to go to the Mark 18. This thing is just not really available anymore. I'm going to put it into C just because of availability. But this gun, if you can get hold of it, you will one shot most people with the FMJ rounds. Now the AP rounds for it kills everybody in one hit in the whole game, but those rounds are almost impossible to obtain. But the FMJs will one shot everybody wearing class four. And I think it'll one shot, I can't remember exactly where the pen is, but it'll it'll do real damage to people wearing class five. I think it's a 50% chance maybe to, to one shot. I mean, let's actually just go and check on the, on the ballistics. So. The Pro Magnum FMJ has, yeah, it has 47 pen, which means it's the same as BP, which means it's about 50% chance to pen class 5 on the first hit. So you've got 50% chance to one-shot someone wearing class 5, you've got 100% chance to one-shot someone wearing class 4. So it's a good gun if you can get hold of it, but given that you have to kill Sturman a billion times to get it, and the top top ammo is just impossible to obtain, I'm going to put it down into C. Then we have the GL40. I just haven't seen this weapon at all. I really haven't seen this gun at all, this wipe. It's a, it's a strange one. Uh, the fact that it's not really available, no one's really using it. I'm going to put it down into D. Like, It's good if you get people in the right situation, you can one shot them with it. But most people aren't running it. And I just think it's it's too situational and not available enough for people to be using it. And quite frankly, that's a good thing. All right, well, love it or hate it, that's the tier list. That's where I'm going to put these things. There's some of my own personal biases and gameplay elements in here. Things like with the pistols, where I don't use pistols all that much. But that's just sort of personal preference. So hope that you found it interesting. Thanks as always to all the patrons who support the channel. You guys are really, really awesome. If you learned something, consider dropping a like and a sub on the channel. Look at the links below to check out all the other socials. And as always, guys, I'll see you next time and have fun in your raids.